So we're here with Professor Antonella Poche, and I would welcome, uh, you just you. finished your wonderful talk, keynote, and I would just like to ask you to give a short overview of what you told us in the talk. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity of being here in person. That was really uh, emotional, coming back to, to the city, but having the possibility to share this experience uh, uh, with uh, uh, colleagues and uh, other friends in person, but uh, also online. So all uh, the people that were connected online could share this emotional experience yes. that we had in person. So it was really um, engaging. Um, yes, I, I, I teach experimental pedagogy. I'm full professor of experimental pedagogy and museum education in Italy at the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia where I chair a center for research, the Intellect Center, where we try to carry out uh, uh, different activities, uh, especially research, but also uh, training, professional uh, training, uh, in order to support uh, the development of cross-sectional skills, especially critical thinking and digital uh, skills, through the use of heritage and museums. Uh, what I was saying in, in our uh, presentation today was related to the use of uh, the collections from uh, any, actually any uh, museum, any cultural site um, to support um, uh, new development and change growth, the definition of new economical uh, models. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes either we, we give for granted uh, the uh, use of heritage uh, or we, we don't understand the value uh, of heritage in, also in economic growth mm -hmm. and social uh, growth. So that's uh, a point that we really uh, would like to work uh, in and to support uh, in time through research, through development, through cooperation with companies uh, and uh, institutional, um, cultural institutions. Wonderful, that is really important. And so often it's misunderstood that culture is a luxury. Uh, but economics is, is something that comes before it. But can you tell us what is misunderstood about the way culture actually can enable economic growth? What is often misunderstood in this? This, this, this uh, uh, a widespread misunderstanding. Um, I think that that is due first uh, to the uh, cultural institutions themselves who took their role as mainly the one of uh, preservation of certain objects that are very important, they represent our identity, mm -hmm. but it's exactly because they represent our identity, they can be really places where no borders are um, uh, made, every, every distinction can be overcome, and uh, growing socially, helping participation, helping well-being as a way to support participation in society, automatically you get also economic growth. And you know, if you have people who know more about their, their, uh, their role in society, people who can you know, be more active in society, yes. automatically you have also economic growth. But we, and I presented it in, in our um, contribution today in, in, during my talk, we are working on a new model for economic and social development. Through interaction, talking to different agents, starting round tables, discussing specific topics, and identifying new um, key performance indicators. That, I think, is the, the, the way. Wonderful, that is really great. And is there something that uh, someone in the learning field or, or someone in their, in their daily lives, is there something that they can do to help contribute to this? I mean, of course, you're devoting your career to, to making this improvement, but what can, what can we do? 
every one of us can actually uh, take part in this. First of all, um, um, thinking about what is around them themselves. So sometimes, but I live in Rome, so I can tell it <laughs> that you don't even, you get accustomed to whatever, even to the beauty of Rome, yes. and you don't realize the value that is there. What um, we created and what we contribute to create through that heritage, and what does it represent for us, for, for our families, for our um, society, actually. So every one of us can do something. Um, I'm sure that uh, if you develop a new way of interpreting heritage, you know, a again, everything comes uh, afterwards. Wonderful. That's really great. Well, I think you, you already answered my next question, but uh, as our world is changing so quickly, we've certainly faced a lot of changes and we're facing uh, even more extreme changes. Is there something that the learning community can do in order to address the, cha address the changes we're going through to make life more it's livable and absolutely. humane for us all? We what is the one thing you would do? I think we have a duty. We have, as educators, we have a duty to support uh, the uh, ability uh, of everyone to adapt to continuous change. And this ability can be supported and trained only uh, through different kind of strategies that we need to put in place. And, and these kind of strategies uh, can be uh, supported uh, through heritage experiences. Mm -hmm. That's what we realized and that's what, according to, to data collected through research, we, we realized. So the, um, the possibility to, to work through heritage sites in view of developing um, this kind of, of skills, soft skills mainly, mm -hmm. and critical thinking skills, um, first of all, because also uh, as regards digital skills, uh, as I was saying during my talk, um, we don't need to know how to use certain technologies, we need how to adapt to the change of technologies that is so fast. Mm -hmm. And so you need to be selective, you need to um, you know, solve immediate problems related to also to the use of technology in order not to be excluded from society. If you can't right. use certain technology, you are excluded. But if you are able to select, to adapt, and to have a critical use of technology, that, of course, makes you an active citizen. And that's what we want, to be more democratic, to be more, um, you know, to, to fight uh, poverty and uh, exclusion. Right, absolutely. Learning how to learn and learning, learning how to learn. Learning better. Yeah. Because we can't predict what's to come, but it's that ability to continuously adapt yeah. and learn uh, and do something new. That's, that's oh, the point. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Well, we're thank still you. not finished with the conference, but no is there way. already an idea that you're walking away with from the Learning Ideas Conference? Yes. There's uh, this idea of um, multidisciplinarity that's uh, a truly um, um, a richness here and added value to this conference. That was really, um, it has always been my, my impression and that's why I so much supported this conference and I really want to be part of it also in the future because there are many, um, many colleagues from different areas, but the, this is a place where dialogue is possible. Yes. Exchange of ideas is possible, so that's the place to develop new learning. Yes, absolutely, a wonderful learning community that there's people who already know each other coming back together every year, yeah. and there's new people. New and people, and, but especially from different fields. And very that's, different that's fields. That's important. Different fields, different places in the world. So, yeah. well, thank you very much, Antonella. Thanks to you. <laughs> All Thanks right. to you. Thank it you very so much. Nice Have a wonderful time. With you. Thank you.